Sometimes you want the user to select a range where there's a minimum and maximum value. In that case, you can use a range slider with interval in our systems. Let me show you how. So this is my service studio. I'm inside a reactive web application that has an entity called loan request. With these attributes that allows users to capture their loan requests, name, age of the person requesting loan, amount and rate. I'm going to add uh, two more attributes here uh, for capturing the duration. So one could be duration start or duration min minimum. I think that's more relevant and the duration maximum. Okay, both of these fields should be integers. So just make sure that. Okay, and now I'm going to just drag and drop this here to create the listing and detail screens. There you go, listing screen, uh, nothing different there. But on the detail screen, that's where we want to modify it. So instead of these fields here, these two fields there, we want to merge them into one and uh, have a range slider of intervals. So I'm going to clean this up first. I'm going to remove both uh, the text boxes there. And I'll also don't need uh, this one more label. Okay, so I'm going to remove the whole container. This one, this label, I can now just mention duration. Okay, and then uh, next to it, I'll put my range slider with an interval. So this one. Okay, so this one has minimum and maximum. For the usual one where you only have one selection, like one value, you can use the normal range slider. There's another video on this. Feel free to watch it. Now, uh, next is I have to uh, get rid of this error that is coming from the label thing here. So by providing these, these configurations, so I'm selecting the range slider. It has to have a minimum value. Let's say maybe for loan minimum pay, payback period should be six months. Maximum value can be maybe 48 months. Initial interval, which is the default selection that you want to show could be maybe 12 and the end could be maybe 24. You're also able to specify steps so like two, maybe. So each step when the user is moving the slider, it will move two at a time, two values at a time. And then there are other configurations also. One mandatory property that you have to provide is the action. So this action is where uh, you can capture when somebody is changing the slider. And once you go in there, you are able to make assignment. So in my case, I'm going to assign the value. So if you expand this, this event, you can see it has two values coming in. They start and end. And these two I'm going to pass back to my loan request duration start and duration, uh, duration minimum and duration maximum fields. How? Just select the field. I have to do left hand, right hand, right hand kind of assignment. So duration minimum would be the start. Okay. And in the same assignment operator, the duration max would be the interval end. Okay. And thereafter, we also want to maybe display the selected duration here. So for that, I can use an expression to show user what they have selected. The expression is here. I can display maybe uh, with a string concatenation, both things in the same field, like this min plus dash plus the max. That's how you can do screen concatenation. And then months should be okay. I see one error here. Let me see what exactly it is. Oh, it's the label. So the label that we have is still is referring to the previous text field. So I can just point it to now and that should be okay. Uh, it looks very close to the button. So let me just fix that up also. So the last container that we have here, let's put some margin, maybe 30% at the bottom. So button has some space. And that's it. Uh, let's publish the application and see the outcome. So uh, there could be additional uses of uh, these range slider where intervals, where anywhere where you want to have uh, minimum and maximum values, this can be used. So I'm launching the application now. And if I go in, you can see how it looks. If I start moving, you can see the values. So minimum month, maximum months, and the range, and the selection is also shown here. Okay. And that's how I use a range slider with intervals. Thanks for watching.